innate about this sport that attracts very intelligent and very driven people. I don't think many people know how serious this sport is. This isn't you just hop on and gallop around in a circle. And they want to see us crawling. Back down to the working trot, now back down to the working trot. Yeah, they want to see us crawling. Coming back in for their second tour. We're not going to give in now. I'm definitely in awe of what these kids do in order to balance both academics and this sport. I just love being around the horses and competing. It's a privilege to come down here and ride and be around horses every day. It's a huge deal to come here. It was really good. I was definitely clearing on the second. Wef gives every level of riding the opportunity to compete, all the way up to the Olympic level. Everyone that wants to make something of themselves in this sport is here. If you have your eyes open, you are learning 24-7 at WEF. Show up that day, and it's really not only in the hands of yourself, but in the hands of your horse as well. You're working as a team, and you never know what could happen. I think horseback riders are tough. They have a lot of mental strength. When you fall off, get back back on. It's not just your two minutes in the show ring, it's everything that's going on, you know, behind the scenes and outside of the show ring. I was first brought to horses because my three older sisters, they started riding at a young age. Even since before I could sit on a horse myself, I was sitting on the pommel of my mom's saddle riding. There wasn't really a time where I started. I basically was born doing it. We would drive past the paddocks every day and I'd ask my mom if I could ride a pony. I just loved horses since the minute I was born, basically. Something just drew me to them, and I just loved everything horse. My aunt and uncle are professionals, and my grandma was also involved in the sport. When I was two months old, I got put on our little retiree pony, and I just loved being around the barn ever since. When I saw my sisters going to the shows and competing against one another and seeing who would beat one another, I think that really is what drove me to go into the sport, because I wanted to one day beat my sisters. <laughs> Some family competition never hurts. I'm really proud of winning the NALO Junior Jumper Final last year with my horse, Colin. I think my biggest riding accomplishment would have to be winning the 2020 EMO USHA Jumping Seat Medal Final East Coast. I was ecstatic. I couldn't even believe it. And I was so grateful for that day. When I was a junior rider, I really looked up to all these previous winners of the Equitation Finals. and. I think it really just paid off at the end for me to be able to be one of those winners. Definitely my biggest accomplishment this far is winning USET finals last year. That was just you know, the culmination of so many years. You know, it's a really big final and a big accomplishment so far. That's probably you know, the one I'm most proud of. All right, so Connie's getting up here to go next. Holly Hill's one, two, they're back three, four, five. Santa six. Sarah seven. It's actually eight for Megan. I'd say the Winter Equestrian Festival is definitely one of the most competitive winter circuits in not only America, but the world. WEF is a huge deal to anybody's schedule. You get to really educate yourself on the sport. You can walk down the pathways to your ring and you can be walking next to the Olympic gold medal winner. To succeed in this world, they're going shoulder to shoulder with the 
best in the world, there is a little bit of a comfort level to not be intimidated when they go to big pressure competitions. not just like a hobby you're going and doing for fun and then going to the beach the second half of your day or something like that. Double clear, he was a really good boy. So where are you headed now? Right here. Right after circuit, yeah, because I have school like literally the next day. So like, I've been gone for three months, so I try to get home as quickly as I can. And usually on those days, I would be up at 5.30 or 6 and getting on my horse and riding him in the dark and have my phone flashlight on riding down the path. I often bring my laptop to the barn, so in between either a lesson or a round, if I'm go running to the ring, I try and find time just to like stop and study at the table. I would do my course, wait to the flat phase, show it, walk the course for the other class, show that course. School goes to 12.45. And then there's normally a four hour break, so I would go flat my other horses, eat some lunch, show again. Sometimes coming down here can increase the stress level a little with school. It's a lot going on at once. <laughs> and then more riding and I'll go to the barn and then I will go to my night class. And then I'd probably go back home, shower, watch some classes, do my work, eat some dinner and go to bed early. <laughs> no. <laughs> Every single year, I am just more in awe of these kids that come through. I decided that way before I went to college that I wanted to be professional, but I always thought in the back of my mind that I just need to have a backup plan just in case this is a sport and injuries happen and you never know what could happen to you. So I always just wanted a backup plan. And I study agriculture economics because I have a big passion in horse speed. So I really had that in the back of my mind that one day I could always just go into nutrition of horses if um, I ever needed to. My grades have always been important to me and my goal was always just to keep up with my schoolwork down here, especially with such a heavy show schedule sometimes. At home, I, I just go to a regular school, so I go Monday through Friday, 8.15 to 2.45. When I come down here, I would have tutoring usually Monday through Thursday and just email my teachers back and forth and they would always post the work we had online and I would do it that way. I've been at the school since first grade and leaving for the same amount of time every year. They see the results I'm having and they see that I'm doing well and now they're really excited because I've committed to a D1 equestrian team. I knew that I wanted to be a professional in this sport and I knew that it would take time and commitment. That is why I decided to talk to my parents about doing online high school. I go to school, in-person school, even when I am here at WEF, so I go back and forth to Connecticut. They record the classes so I can watch them over again, and that's really helpful for me. Way ahead of time, they have to talk to their counselor, talk to the head of the school, go to individual teachers, and try and map out a schedule how they don't fall behind in their classwork, but yet they're able to leave, compete, train. There's a higher sense, I believe, that they can communicate with adults earlier in life because they have to communicate. The intensity and the hard work and the passion that you need to actually be successful, I just wish that we could almost translate it into like a more commercial way of viewing, just so more people can understand the commitment that you need in order to be good at this sport. I keep coming back because I just love the horses, spending time in the barn, every time improving on something I might have done wrong or didn't do my best. I think my drive comes from the partnership you form with those 1,200 pound animals. 
the partnerships you form with them and the people around you. It's really a life-changing experience. I think a lot of teachers, parents, might think that equestrian is pulling them from their education, but the kids that I've dealt with that succeed at this are very successful at school and driven at school and whatever they do. There's something about equestrian sport that really makes a child learn how to dig deep and be strong in all aspects of their life. That's an impressive thing to be able to brag about. Catch me howling at the moon.